Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. In red, it says Alex, that's me. In white, it says the Ramble, that's the program, and it goes until midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. It's been a little while since we talked to this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Stephen Pearl. Oh, thank you. Stephen. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's uh, wonderful to be back. I could say Happy New Year for one more day. You can say it till the 14th. If you say it after the 14th, the person you say it to has the right to smack you in the face with a di- big, dead, stinking cross-eyed fish. It really, is that oh, a, is that a rule? Is that is that a rule that's hard uh, hard in in? It's a it's a law in the world of pearl. So you know, it's, you too, it's too early in the day for me to get out a coherent sentence. I don't know. Well, have, have some more coffee. Big sip. Take your crazy straw. Have some fun. Plus, all of a sudden, I'm getting a headache, and I don't know whether it's the earphones or my. 1939 limited edition. Oh, or 1939. The New York fan. That was that was my day year birth. Oh really? You gone with the wind came out and uh, yeah, see this. Off, see this? I'm, I'm all dressed up for it. Look at this. Yeah, 80, man, wow, 81 years. Yeah. <laughs> 1939. Yeah. So, Fine, yeah. I'm yeah. 1955. Now, I don't know when this is going to run exactly, but next week, uh, you, Marjorie and I are getting our uh, vaccination. Oh, you're getting vaxxed out. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we can then go out and breathe in people's faces. There you go. I'm, I'm afraid again. It's a new vaccine. It's a new vaccine, so I'm afraid I get it. I might grow another head. Well, no, and you, it might not like the is, same music as me, so I'm going to wait. You know what's wrong is they're calling it a vaccine, and I suppose that would be a general term, but it's not your traditional vaccine. The traditional vaccines, you took a little bit of the bug, okay, yeah. And, you, and you inserted it in people, and then they grew antibodies, and they didn't get it, all right? Yeah. So that it worked that way, all right? Unfortunately, that's not the case here, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, th- th- or fortunately. What it is, this is a, this is a kind of a, uh, a, it's not a vaccine. It's a learning thing. It teaches your body to go after this particular thing. In other words, it doesn't create an antibody to do it. It creates some kind of, I don't know, high-level device or something to make it work. Something. I, I know yeah, nothing of science. But, but it's, not, it's not your traditional vaccine where you have to worry that they're injecting the disease into you. Yeah. Because they're not. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, how's everything been? No, nah, it, it has barely been. There's nothing's going on. I'm not doing nothing. And my car's acting up again. I'm having a wonderful time. Did they so, lock everybody in place there? No, there's no lockdown as far as I know. But hardly anything's open. And when you go to a casino, there's like 12 people in there. And, uh, you know, I used up all my work in, the, in November and December. So I'm just waiting for something to fall on my lap again. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just sitting, sitting here. Working on my white boy Chicago accent. That's what I'm doing here. So your your car uh, is uh, is screwing up. Again. Uh, there was smoking the other night, so I put some coolant in it, and then it stopped smoking. But I'm afraid to drive away. We drove to the supermarket and back, which only a few blocks, and it worked fine. But I'm afraid to drive it long distances. Well, why don't you just tell it that smoking is bad for it? I, they, they loves to, it's a hoodlum car. It loves to smoke. The pizza joint like beats up the foreign cars and shit. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. The hoodlum car. <laughs> the hoodlum car. So so you're pretty well. You're staying home, right? You're not going. Stay home. home. There's nowhere to go. Nothing to do. And nobody to see. It's a, just thank God for the, my three little babies, or I would have hung myself. So uh, I mean, sit here. Y- I mean, the, the, you don't have a you don't have a gym to go to. I would imagine. I imagine they. Oh, I can't get to the gym. I've been, uh, you know, lifting my weights at home and walking, taking hour long walks during the daytime just yeah. to do something. Do you wear do, do, do you wear a mask? Outside, yes. Inside, no. No, of course it's not. not inside. Mask. You know. Uh, well, you go out. Yeah, you go you go to a Seven Eleven or a restaurant. So you got to have a mask. So yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, but when you were just walking down the street, do you wear it? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, I got, okay. Because I, 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 I want you back. to, I want you to be safe. You're one of the few friends I have that are still alive. So, you know, 
What happened? All of a sudden, we lost your sound. What, what's he doing? God, it's like doing a, it's like doing zooming with my with a, with an old person. Wait a minute, I am an old person. Turn on your audio. Something happened to your audio. What are you, what's he doing? What, what? What? Well, we'll just sit here while he finishes fiddling around. But, oh, oh, there we go. There you go. There, go. there you go. What happened? Somebody called me from some scam number, and I, I the, the picture kept going on and off and on and off. So I, oh boy. So I had to wait for them to not call anymore. You know, I hate those guys. I've been now since I saw him in an apartment. And uh, I found one quickly, thank God. But I've been getting nothing but emails and this. We have free apartments made of candy. You can eat them. You can live in them. Come call us. If you know, it, it almost doesn't pay for you to go online and ask for anything because then you get right. tons of things for that. Uh, yeah, I, I used to get one email a month, which is fine with me. And now I'm getting like a thousand a day, and they all suck. So. I mean, I wonder how all these people suddenly realized I have erectile dysfunction. Yeah, they all, everybody, oh, we know about your spiral conjunctivitis in 1973 as hardcore fans. So. Spiral conjunctivitis? Yeah, you had that in 73 in New York. No, 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 wait a minute. I didn't, I, I had, well, I had conjunctivitis in New York. I thought you said it was spiral conjunctivitis. I was listening. Spiral? Yeah. That's I what you never said. heard of that. Well, Vi I never oh. did either until you said it. Oh, I said viral. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> you said you said spiral conjunctivitis. I, mean, I, like down. I, I figured it was just a really pretty kind of conjunctivitis in your eye. Yeah, you know. like the Bill Graham White Show. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, but it, it, you know, I no, I, I. Uh, oh, that was terrible when I got that conjunctivitis. So. I remember you said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I was messed up way back yeah, Well, I mean, I, I got it, and I, I kind of denied what it was. I just thought it was just my eye was itching a lot, right? Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, I'm going somewhat blind, so much so that I finally decided I better go see a doctor when I bumped into a kid on the street, a little kid, because uh, I didn't hey, see him. So I went to the uh, doctor, and when you have conjunctivitis, or you think you have conjunctivitis, and you go to an eye doctor... Everybody like put it, it, it. It's like there was a there was a, a, a infection going on there, like COVID. I mean, they put on the mask and they yeah. stand a mile away and they got the rubber gloves and they go, "Don't touch me," and they don't oh, touch it. And he um, he did something. He poured sulfuric Ooh. acid or something into my eye. Ah, they're not supposed to do that. No, they do that. It supposedly doesn't hurt the eye, but it burns oh. away the infection. Oh, okay. Now don't try it at home, folks. If you've got, you know, if you've got conjunctivitis, yeah, to be seeing Candyman. Yeah, don't suddenly uh, go ahead and say, oh, "I think I'll take care of my conjunctivitis." Hey, if he can do it, I can do it, boy. But man, it was. I had it bad. Thanks. Yeah. And I think I've gotten it a couple of other times in my life, but not not like that. Yeah. Yikes! Yeah, yeah. yeah, eyeball diseases scare me. Yeah. 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 Throw my teeth all you want, but lay off these baby browns, baby. Now, here's what old people talk about. And you're old. How old are you now? 65. Get off my you know, you're just old enough that if you lived in New York right now, you could get the uh, the vaccination. Oh, boy. I'm the luckiest man in the world. I'd rather have $2,000 from the government. Give me money. Give me money. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Mr. Bennett, the good news is you can get the virus. The bad news is you're 81. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's bad news. Very bad I, news. I, I, it, it's funny, though. I... You know, you always think of yourself younger than you are. Although I, yeah. I do look in the mirror now for the first time and go, "What the fuck happened to me?" Yeah, but sure. you know, whoa, whoa. I'm not uh, a pretty young boy anymore. But, but, uh, it, you just you 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 as you get older, people start having a different attitude towards you. So now, when I hear the governor, for instance, on TV talking about Oh, the people over sixty-five, uh, 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 over seventy-five are going to get the the uh, vaccination because they're the ones who need it the most. And I go, "Oh yeah. my God!" Now they're taking pity on me. <laughs> you know, yeah, all, all, yeah. All of a sudden, it's and we have to take care of our elders. I'm going. No, you don't have to take care of your elders. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm losing it. Things yeah. that I know how to do automatically now I'm going. Now, where is that on the computer? Where is that icon? Oh, where's the yeah. where's the icon 
that, that you know that I use every day of the week. Right. And, and which one am I looking for? Yeah, I'm going I know my pancreas was here yesterday. Where did I leave? Yeah, it? where did I leave my pancreas? You God know. damn it! You my coccyx the other day. Yeah, well, my coccyx doesn't work anymore. My coccyx, hey, yeah, yeah. coccyx, yeah. You know, I had they they went <laughs> down there and they fiddled with my prostate, you know, and now it's, now it's just cranky. <laughs> it's very mad. I'm, like, I'm in my car. I'm just an old guy with old parts. So they have one of all apart one by one. Well, what they did is they went in there and they inserted seeds into my prostate, about a hundred of them, radioactive seeds. Oh, see. It's all American seeds. If you know ten people. Now, if you were a prostate, wouldn't that piss the shit out of you? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't want seeds planted in me. Yeah, yeah. So they planted the seeds in me. And by the way, by the same doctor who planted the seeds in Rudy Giuliani. Oh, <laughs> and they drove him crazy. Too. So <laughs> so watch out. Soon I may become like him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, man, oh, man. So what do you think of all the crap that's been going on? The country and the world are going batshit crazy, and I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. It looks like the hubcaps have just blown off. So, yep, uh, it's just, I'm, just, I'm just watching. It's just crazy. I so, have a uh, feeling that if the whole world came to an end, Las Vegas would still exist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a lunch, you know. <laughs> just, yeah. Everything else is stomped out of sight. It, it, it's like, it, it, it's like what it, whatever disease or pestilence comes along goes, eh, they're not worth it. Not worth it. And we're still here. We still have the five dollar buffet in season. Yeah, Come you, on. You st and you still have an Eiffel Tower, and you and you and you have, have, and, and and you have the have skyline it. of New York. Yeah, and name it. We got it here. So yeah. Vegas will survive. Vegas is like Keith Richards, the Keith Richards of city. Well, it, 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 I always felt that Las Vegas was the silliest city in America. Oh, it's a cartoon. That's why I get along well here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's but it's really silly. It's really silly. Now, what's inter like what's interesting is uh, is Kravitz, who I talked to as well, moved uh, back to Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Uh, 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 yeah, it. Yeah, it. Uh, he he's Massachusetts, and um, he he's really happy now. Oh, that's good. You know, I mean, he was living in Boulder City. You know where Boulder City is, right? I I heard about it. I read about it. Well, you go out to the dam, you drive through Boulder City. Oh, uh, okay. Because that's where they housed all the people that built the dam. And uh, then okay. when they yeah, left, sure. Kravitz moved in. Kravitz moved in. <laughs> yeah. So, it's one view to rule so all When he was out there, I mean, every time I talked to him, he was miserable. Just miserable. Oh, he said and, it was horrible. I know he didn't like it out here. He wasn't getting any work, so you know, just what do I stay? You know? Yeah, and now he's so happy where he is. He's just it's he still he went back home. He yeah. used to be home. Some people. He has, now there's a brother there, his family there. So I've never yeah. seen the guy this happy. Oh, good for him. Yeah, good for him. yeah, good for him. Oh, he's. Nice. I, I, was, I was happy here until the virus hit. But so here, he, he, here's the fact: I'm talking to Stephen Pearl. He's one of the guys I talked to. He had a fit. Okay, a heart situation, right? <laughs> right. Then I talked to Kravitz, and of course, here's a guy who has everything. He has, he yeah. has, um, uh, what's that thing you get from shooting with needles? Uh, but years well, later, I, years, years later, I, yeah, you know, he had Hep Hep C. Hep so C, now he's taking a medication for that. Hep okay, hep you getting the picture here? I'm hanging out with nothing but a bunch of old farts who are younger than I am. By about 15 years. <laughs> yep. And then I talked to, to Durst, and he's lying in bed all the time because oh, he yeah, had a stroke. A stroke. stroke you know, and I'm going, geez almighty, you know, everybody I know is, and, and I think I, I'm i in bad shape. You know, I'm complaining every day. Oh, my toe hurts today. Yeah. Which it does, oddly enough. And I go, gee, you know, all these other guys, you're younger than me, and they've got all this stuff. I, I should be... I should be happy that I'm actually in relatively good health. Yeah, you got a 20 year lead on us. Yeah. We probably did more cocaine than you. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but anyway. Oh, boy. So, Quite a shovel full. So, how are the cats doing? How are they adapting? Oh, let's see. Where Muddy was just here. Where Muddy? Okay. Oh, he's not here now. So, yeah. they're good. They're good. Three yeah. cats, five eyes. Count them. Five. Now, you had, so, uh, you, had, you had four, right? But one died. 
No, no, no we never oh, went for oh, it. Oh, they're all alive. Then who? who? One of his one of, the, one of the cat's eyes died. So, but oh, that was it. it. Now I I remember yeah. what it was. Yeah. Okay, family. Hey, wait a minute. Let's yeah. see. Come here, buddy. Want to say hello? A cute I kitty. Is he the one-eyed cat? No, he's the two-eyed cat. He's oh, the blues man. Okay. Does, uh, oh, yeah, he looks like a, a blues man. He's the one who just showed up out of nowhere, and he was so sweet, we adopted him. So, yeah, come on, yeah, hey, buddy. Yeah. And the other one with one eye is peeping in and a seafood, is is peeping in a seafood store. I, there they go. They, they, they keep me from hanging myself from the nearest beam. Eh, eh, eh. They keep me from going too crazy. Well, we've run out of time. Hey, what the fuck would it be in the mouth? I got the scene. So get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Stephen Pearl, Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> the leg, it always works. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, and there's Stephen Pearl, and uh, so glad we finally got him back on. Uh, it's been uh, been a while. He he's had he's had computer problems, so we do it on his iPhone. I'll be glad when we get to his uh, his iPhone. Seems to have the sound is not as good, but the picture is better. So you know. Oh hey, you know what I forgot to do? Look, watch. See, you want to see me look gorgeous? There we go. I turned on my lights, and I forgot to do it before we went here. But I, I'm always forgetting something these days. I'm I'm really going nuts. Oh wow, tons of people waiting to go on right now. Hmm, I better I better get to them before they get pissed off at me for just hogging all the good time they could be using to hog all the good time. So um, let me see here. Uh, there they are. They're all coming into into view. Uh, we got uh, Charlene, turn your uh, camera sideways. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, wait a minute. It doesn't uh, doesn't do anything. Oh wow! Yeah, Tons of to go on right? I'm sideways. No, you know, but it, uh, you better yep. turn it back the way it was because uh, <laughs> there's something wrong with your phone. Anyway, uh, who and who's got who's got his audio on? Their audio on. Okay, it was me. It was you, of course. Uh, <laughs> Jeffrey, good to see you tonight. Robert, good to see you tonight. Charlie, good to see you tonight. Um, on a rather auspicious evening, actually. Uh, history. We made history today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this guy just doesn't know when he's got it well well uh, enough off, you know. He could have just said after the last uh, uh, impeachment, uh, well, I don't want that to ever happen to me again. <laughs> you know, it, it either, either Trump is the stupidest guy in America or the it. most calculating and I'm going for most calculating. Nah, stupidest. <laughs> you you going with stupid? I think yeah. both. Really? Hmm. <laughs> um, Multifaceted. Yeah, I got I got to apologize to you people about something. Let me let me. I got to get this off my chest. I've been in a kind of a writing war back and forth tonight with uh, Phil. Huh? And I got to. I'm. I don't know if I'm going to keep having him on on Tuesdays. Uh, you know because. I, I just, he's he's so, you know, if he said, okay, you know, uh, if he stuck to his position the other day about I'm disappointed in Trump and he did wrong and, you know, he he, uh, he overplayed his hand or something like that, fine. But no, he's defending him. He's saying it wasn't his fault. He didn't, you know, he he feels that these people pre-planned what they did at the uh, at the uh, Capitol. And I think there was some pre-planning on that. Yeah. But I don't think by 10,000 people, okay? So, I mean, that notion is a ridiculous notion. And can, we, can we go back a second to the word that Phil used? I'm disappointed in the president. Yeah. No, <laughs> disappointed is when your cat or dog makes a little tinkle at the front door. <laughs> Disappointed is when you thought the check was going to be for twenty five dollars and it was only twenty four. Yeah. yeah. Disappointed is not when there's domestic insurrection. Right. That's well, not the proper term. Uh, the reason I feel uncomfortable with it is, is is that you know, this is my country. It's your country. We were all born into it, uh, and to have some people 
try to initiate a coup, which is exactly what went on the yeah. other day, uh, is it, something that upsets me greatly. And the fact that it doesn't upset him in the same way <laughs> bothers me. It just absolutely gets, gets to my core. I love this country, uh, and I'm not saying right or wrong. I just love this country because of what its hopes and dreams are. Whether it ever lives up to it or not, we can argue. But uh, the fact that, that we have a certain form of government, which, uh, as it goes, is a, not a bad idea, the way it's constructed, and to have that, some people come along and attempt a coup to change all that, just really is, it, it, gets, it gets to my heart. Okay, and so oh, we're the bad guys because we don't want to forgive them for it. Well, you know, it, it, what happened is this guy acted in a capriciously selfish manner because he wanted to save his job. Is that the best way of putting it? Yes. And that all his motivation is a, is self purely selfish behavior, which he then used a mob that he had in his confidence as his weapon to try and get back what he thought he had lost. Does, does all of that make, uh, make, uh, make sense? Of course. Yeah. Yes. And let's, let's go back to Phil a second. This is a pattern we've seen before. Mm -hmm. If you recall, when George Floyd was murdered, mm -hmm. at first, Phil, the first night, said that the act was deplorable. He used that exact word. Mm -hmm and mm -hmm. inexcusable mm -hmm. after he <laughs> as my wife and i like to say foxed up yeah the very next night he came on and he was saying well you know we don't know the circumstances that went on before and where did i hear that that day i heard that watching a half hour of fox yeah. So, you know, he came on with you the first week and said, well, it's kind of it's kind of like, you know, it, it's inexcusable. I'm against it, blah, blah, blah. But since then, he's foxed up with excuses. Well, you know, I, I, before I said Trump was either the stupidest man in America, the most calculating. When you think about the speech he gave, if he wasn't didn't mean what he said, if he didn't mean to rile up that crowd then he was being stupid. But if he knew exactly what he was doing, he was being seditious. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. he knew what he was doing. You know, I think he knew who his crowd was. Look at them, you know. Uh, they are, uh, all, basically, that crowd was made up of racists. It was made up of uh, neo-Nazis. It was made up of, uh, of uh, fascists. Uh, these are not people that, quite frankly, believe in the american way of life they want to steal it away from us yes charlie yeah he was watching the whole violence with glee he was just pleased as punch at what they were doing and he refused to take anybody's call not mcconnell's not not pence well, they, not they, anybody these people right. the the congress people were calling him from their yeah. sequestered areas uh, to ask him to please do something about this. Go on the air, say stop it, or put out a tweet and say stop it, or do something. And he wouldn't take any of their calls. Now that, in and of itself, is benign neglect. Okay? And, oh, at and least. At, at the very least. Uh, when he could have done something about it, that was his crowd. They do his, mar they, he gave marching orders, he could stop those marching orders, but he didn't. And, you know, what went on in, in uh, what ensued was terrible. It was just terrible. But I blame also all those people who let him get away with all this crap during yeah, the last four that. years that he felt he could get away with this. But he just, play, you know, you let somebody keep playing his hand and playing his hand, and eventually he's going to get it all wrong. And this time he got it all wrong. Yes, Brian. Yeah, they said that he was walking around and he was upset that people weren't as happy and excited yes. as he was. Yes. Yes. Well, these are all stories we hear. We don't mm -hmm. know. Okay? I would like to think he wasn't overjoyed. He was just panicked and didn't know what to do. What, what no. No, no, can you luck. picture that, though? That were there. Good luck with that. But there's so, <laughs> there's so many things he could have done to, to tamp this thing down, and he did none of that. And I love you. Mm -hmm. You're very special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Come on, really? Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Alan. 
I have a question. Do you start earlier on on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? No. No. Well, it's just just eight o'clock here. Wait a minute. You're yeah. out in California. It's eight, it's eight, eight o'clock. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to there. start at seven fifty, but a lot of people run long. Yeah, uh, today we, oh. we went at 7.50, actually. Uh, oh, year, okay, year okay, good okay. enough. I assume you're talking about Trump. Mm -hmm. I think he was sitting in his office masturbating, watching this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, he was pleased to spot. With his little, his little hands. <laughs> do you really yeah. think he's capable yeah. of masturbating do, at this point? Can he do that? <laughs> and he had McDonald's deliver some food for him. <laughs> yeah. I see your sauce. <laughs> You know, oh, no. I mean, uh, today I was trying to mull over, you know, what what's the best way to handle this thing? And I said, we oh. absolutely have to we have to um, impeach him. There's no question about that. This kind of behavior cannot be tolerated. OK, now, mind you, impeachment is not guilt. It is the accusation. It's the indictment. Yeah. Uh, and now that it's going to go to the Senate, which it'll do after he's no longer president, uh, I think they're gonna they're gonna find him guilty because I because Mitch McConnell has said I've had it you know and who is the whip of the Republicans in the Senate? It's Mitch McConnell, uh, and there's some people that will rebel against him, but I think we'll get the 17 votes needed to uh, needed to uh, find him guilty. And if he's found guilty, he can't run for public office ever again, and I think he loses. Secret Service protection. Yeah, he yep. gets his health, his pension, his pension, yep. his health, yep. his welfare. Um, My and, understanding is the losing the ability to run for public office is a separate thing altogether, and yeah, it can, be, it can be one in the Senate with a simple majority. Oh, yeah. okay. So and they probably will do that. That's the Fourteenth Amendment or part of it. Yeah, they will. Probably. They will probably do that. In fact, they will do it. In fact, I mean, McConnell says at this point he just wants to not have him come back to be part of the Republican Party or be a voice in the Republican Party. Go away. Go away. Go to Mar-a-Lago for the weekend and don't come back. Well, he's, no, he's get, he can only go to Mar-a-Lago for one weekend because he's used up all his time living there this year. So, <laughs> you know. So, so they, they, oh, sorry. Hmm? What were you, what? They, they call this high crimes and misdemeanors. Mm hmm and when they impeach him, right? Mm -hmm. So does he now have, I don't know, I should know, but will he now have a federal crimes record or something no. like that? No, no, I don't think not so. Yet. No, but- This is not a criminal case. It, yeah. That comes later. Yeah, now, that, now the next thing that comes along is, uh, well, they can go after him now for federal crimes where they yeah. couldn't before, they, ca they, have to, they can go after him now for federal crimes. Uh, they couldn't while he was president, unless, of course, somebody we know comes along and uh, does the what do you call it? Does the uh, the hanky panky, and uh, he somehow is able to pardon himself. In which he case, can't pre, he can't pre pardon himself though. Yes, he for can for crimes that are going to happen. No, 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 he can't. No, he can only. Pardon himself from crimes which he supposedly has already done, of which he may be accused but hasn't yet. You get me? In other words, uh, let's say let's say sure uh, let, let's say last March he robbed a bank. Let's just say that as an argument, okay? okay. A federally insured bank, so it's a federal crime. Okay. So uh, he then is, you know, he's guilty of of that. And that is a uh, that is a um, a crime which he can, he can pardon himself from because it already took place. We didn't know it took place, but it already took place. He can't oh, for future crimes that they find him guilty of. So anything that happened while he was in office, they he can't if, if he if he manages to pardon himself. We don't. We still have a week of entertainment left before this show becomes dull. You know, uh, so in, in, in California, the governor and the and the head of the highway patrol, he's not the chief, they call him a commissioner of California Highway Patrol, which is the state police here, hmm. uh, have, have put out notice and said, you know, that, that they've read the media and all the stuff that uh, you're going to try and attack the capitals and stuff in, throughout the country. Hmm. And they said, we'll be ready. We'll let you protest quietly, which you have the right under the Constitution. But if it gets out of control, 
you can bet that we're not going to be standing there with pistols out. Right. right. So they're going to they're going to be a little more prepared. Maybe some of these Trumpers will get shot and killed by the police. There, there are a good number of constitutional scholars who feel that him pardoning himself will never repeat, oh, no, never, never up. stand right. up in a court of law. That's right. Yeah. What does this make this a group now? How many people do we have? Uh, we, have we have 11? Yeah. 11. What is that? Is that, a, is that a jackpot or is that a... I count 10. Uh, oh, you can't. Well, wait, wait a minute. Nine? No, no with with me. You count yourself. Eleven Charles? with you. You count myself. So uh, you got uh, nine, royal ten, flush. and eleven. It's a royal flush. Okay, let me see if I can. Uh, where where do I have those things? I keep forgetting how to. Oh, there's it. Kevin. He's eleven. Okay. Uh, huh? A royal flush is five cards, all the same suit. Yeah. Ace, king, queen, jack, ten. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> Jade, I didn't know that. No wonder I lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is uh, is no, yeah, eleven is what we call the royal flush. Well, there I have. I, the, I, 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 I think I think the royal the flush house. is who's leaving the White House right now. That's the royal flush. <laughs> That's the royal flush, absolutely. Um, hello, Vernon, and hello, Kevin, and hello, Brian. Everybody ends with N here. What is this? Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, John Larkin ends with an N. Let's oh see. Allen ends with an N. Gee, <laughs> that's uh, uh, I. I think every anybody else have end with an N. No, Charlene Martinez. No, that's an M, and it ends with a Z. So I have a, I, mine's an N. Yours is an N. Yeah. Ray Renati. It's the same. same <laughs> oh, oh, you, oh, oh, yeah. Look, look, folks. When I when I put that up, you can see Renatin. Okay. Oh. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I watched this thing today, and I just said, you know, it's it, they got to impeach him. They can't, they can't let this go unsaid. You know, uh, what are you saying to the next guy? You can do it too. You know, yes, sure. yes, John. Did you see that guy, Paul Gosar from yeah. Arizona? He yeah. looked drunk. He was drunker and shit. <laughs> he was like, rah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh really? He was part of the ones planning the whole attack. Yeah, his brother came out and said that the guy's a psycho. He's yes. a white nationalist. Uh, yes. He excelled. Is that the guy that spoke that morning on the Trump podium? In, during uh, the, yeah, I think no. so. He's from Arizona. Was, oh, yeah, yeah, like, wait a minute, is this guy uh, a congressman? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. From Arizona. From Arizona. Well, Gosar called for Biden's con- uh, to concede. He wants his concession on his desk tomorrow. Yeah. Did he say that? <laughs> yes, he yes. did. I hope he's <laughs> holding his breath. He put these are the t- idiots that want us to unify. This is yeah. a, this is an idiot. Oh, yeah. No, wait a This yeah. is an idiotic behavior. This is delusional behavior. Oh yeah. There's more of it than just him, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, they say they're they're looking into it now that a member of Congress gave some people a tour of the Capitol the day yes. before, and they were people yes. that they have video of them rioting inside the next day. Wow. Yes. So that they think a congressman one. actually may have been partially complicit in this whole thing. More than one. Really? Yep. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody somebody said, oh, wait, I'm cutting off Charlene, sorry. Hmm. No, I think Alex, um, I, I heard last night on CNN that some guy said we're going to hear more shocking things, and I think you just broke that scoop for me when you just said that, Alex. I'm not sure, but they said we're going to hear more amazing, shocking things. I think you just said it. Well, we, may, we, it may, is, right? we may find out more than we ever believed how much of a coup this was. Well, uh, there, there's a rumor that all the panic buttons were disconnected in the in the where the the Congress and the Senate were meeting, and so nobody. <laughs> They hit the buttons, but the police didn't come or whoever they needed. How would they have known that there even was panic yeah. buttons? Well, of course, there's, 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 of course there's panic buttons in there. Why wouldn't there oh, be? They yeah. should have been installed the day that Trump got into office. Yes, Ray, you had your hand up. I, 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 AOC released a small video today, and she said that something really bad happened to her during this thing. She's extremely traumatized, but she can't talk about it. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really curious. I, I think a lot of things happened that we... Still don't have any yeah. idea about. Wow. She can't talk about That's... it for legal reasons, but she was not doing well. Hmm. A stupid congresswoman from 
Colorado was text was texting Nancy Pelosi's position when all this. Oh was my going. god! Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that, wow. That psycho with the gun that tried to bring the gun in. Yeah. And, yeah. That that the one that, that's the QAnon freak. That lady's a nutcase. It's scary. Yeah. Are these yeah. people insane? Yes. Yeah, they yes. are. Mm-hmm. I guess they are. I guess they are. Unfortunate because she's a real looker too, but <laughs> it's something's wrong with her. Yeah. yeah. Of guns. Trump's friends are insane people. So yeah. was Sarah Palin, but look what she turned out to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. Well, at least she wasn't trying to storm the Capitol. <laughs> you know, and she hasn't come out like. Phil saying, well, it really wasn't Trump's fault. I don't think she said anything about this. She's kept quiet on that, that end. Of Sarah, it. She's probably Sarah, gonna Sarah wasn't going to storm the Capitol, but she could see it from her backyard. Well, <laughs> if nothing more, look, look, if I gave Phil, a clear if day. I gave Phil everything, okay, that Trump didn't say anything terrible when he was giving a speech, he wasn't trying to incite a riot, okay, I'll, let me just give him that. He's guilty alone for one reason, and that is he got a call from these people when they were in hiding to please do something, and he didn't do anything. That Mm. is a malfeasance of office. It's uh, just completely turning a blind eye to a situation, and um, uh, quite frankly, that alone is impeachable. You know, yes, Ray. The thing is, if you watch that whole speech that went on that morning, you know, Trump reminds me of the mafia, Don. He never yeah. explicitly yeah. says, go down there and be violent. He sort of hints at it. And then all of his other henchmen, Giuliani and that other guy, I forget his name, they were the ones who said, go down there. Be, you know, they basically said, go down there, be violent, be strong. You can't be yeah, a wimp. Yeah. We got it. He's a typical, he's a, he's a typical mafia don guy. Yeah, but you know they did that prior. Him. They were the opening act for Trump, who then came and amplified it. Exactly, yeah. you know. and it's all—it was all planned. Yeah, I, I would—I would bet that Giuliani ends up in prison. He needs to. Uh, I hope so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so does Trump. But yeah. He won't go. Yeah, but you know. Uh, yes, um, um, mm. uh, and, uh, 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 Robert. Did anyone see sixty Minutes? The interview with the Georgia Secretary of State, where yeah. they talked about Giuliani showing a film clip that gave the impression that votes were being hidden. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the meantime, it, yeah. it turns out that if you watch the, the entire sequence, they were locking them up because they yes. were finished for the day. Yeah. Part one. Part two, there were about 30 plus people to witness this yeah. from both sides of the aisle. So they took the snippet out of the uh, tape yeah, yeah. and tried yeah. to portray that these votes. Would, would you believe the first time I ever saw that piece of footage was on Fox one day? And they were getting apoplectic over it. See there, you can see it's being stolen. And Fox is saying this is news. And, of course, it wasn't. They didn't show the whole thing. They, they said that they were going to go home for the night, and they wanted to put these in a safe place, and they locked yep. them up in this, in this uh, bag or whatever it was. And then they decided to keep voting. So they pulled it back out again. Yes, yes. And started counting again. Yep. Did, uh, did anyone listen to the whole hour of Trump when he called that attorney general? I listened. He, I would, yes. I listened to the whole thing. He was harping on that a lot, oh, yeah. and, as if it's a fact. And they weren't even arguing with him because they know it was useless. Uh, yeah. They no, were just. I think you know they were. I, the impression I got was they were just trying to get him off the phone. Exactly. They yeah. just was. He wouldn't shut up. He yeah. just wouldn't shut up. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. talked almost the whole time. Yeah. That that never came up with Phil, the business about him trying to, you know, trying to coerce the Georgia officials into turning the election upside down. Perhaps Phil is disappointed in that, too. Well, it was very mob like <laughs> his approach was very mob like. If oh. you noticed, it was like, yeah. uh, you know, how would you like your state not to be so pretty anymore? Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> exactly. And he says, I, you're going on record. I like it when he says, and I'm putting you on notice. I'm yeah. putting you on notice that you said, I mean, like, oh. And it's dangerous okay. for you. It's like to Tony Soprano. He just put you on notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he even said that. I'm putting you on notice. You've got a really pretty state there. How would you like it not to be yeah. so pretty anymore? Yeah. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I can't listen. To I'm Trump. disappointed watch in Trump. Trump. Aren't you disappointed in Trump? Yeah. Yes. I'm disappointed in Benedict Arnold. You know, he had a chance. Yeah, right. He had a real chance to surprise all of us, but I don't think he had it in him. 
No. You know, no. I mean, he could have been a, a good president. He could have taken the job seriously. And that's what I hope the day he got elected. Then, all right, so maybe he's going to be better than we thought he was. But no, this is a guy who grew up privileged, uh, a spoiled brat, and he's still a spoiled brat, you yep. know. He was a thief his whole life. I mean, yeah. his whole history <laughs> has been nothing but ripping people <laughs> off, you know? Yeah. So we should have known that. I mean, I knew that was going to happen. You know? well, I, I hear Trump voters say, but I like a lot of the things he did. But the yeah. thing is, I could never get them to narrow it down to a list. It, could it, I Phil please always have says a list? It. Phil says, I, I have to say, I liked what he's done. And I get, yeah. I'm thinking Health to care. Well, that didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Did well, they bitched about it all through Obama's eight years. Yeah. You know, I would have figured their plan was on a folded, yellowed piece of paper by then. So yeah. that didn't happen. The wall didn't happen. Phil started trumpeting this executive order that was going to lower all our prescriptions. I'll ask you yeah. guys, how are your prescriptions doing? Uh, I just, uh, Nothing uh, happened. Because, because I lost my old insurance, which was very cheap on drugs. And I had to go to my newest one, which isn't as cheap on drugs. My pr drug price every month is going to go up about three times. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Donald Trump. You really helped a lot with that one. You know, that was a good idea, by the way, that he had. I oh, mean, it sure. was something that needed to be done. I, I don't think there's any question in our minds that that didn't need to be done. But damn it, um, it didn't get done, you know. And uh, uh, But that, that is important, and we still should have that on the table, and we should still do something about it. Uh, drugs should be no more expensive here than they are in Canada, okay? Exactly. It's, they're coming from the same people. Yep. All right. They're being sold by the same people. It's just that somehow Canada gets them cheaper because they say to them, you're not going to be able to sell your drug in this country unless you bring the price down on those things. But Litigation. We, huh? Yeah. Litigation in this country. Yeah. That's the drug company's reason for why the drugs are more expensive here. Because we can sue them when something goes wrong. Well, you, you, I think you can sue in Canada, can't you? Sure. Yeah, I, I mean, so you know, I mean, I I think uh, you, uh, I think they, you know, I would be willing to give the drug companies a, a bit of a, a, a pass on uh, suits if they would lower the prices in half, okay? In but you Canada, know, like for instance, for instance, uh, Shecky used to have a terrible case of uh, eczema. I mean, it was horrible. I mean, he used to go to his house, and he looked like he was a snake that had been shedding all day. You know, it was all over the rug and everything. He was just terrible, terrible. And, and, and he had it for years, and I always felt bad for him because uh, it, it, it hampered his lifestyle. I mean, there were certain times of the year it wasn't as bad as it was in other times of the year. It was terrible, though. They've come out with a drug for it, and it went away 100%. That's how good this drug is. People who've had eczema don't have to worry about it anymore. Well, it's a great drug. Do you, he has to get the shot twice a year. <laughs> Do you know how much this drug costs? I think, I may be wrong if I'm saying this, I think it's 10 grand or 20 grand. I can't remember what he told wow. me. <laughs> yeah. That's expensive. <laughs> yeah, well, luckily his insurance takes care of most of it. But I mean, come on, you know, I mean, if even if it blew me, that drug wouldn't be worth it to me, you know, as as it stands right now, Medicare does not have the power to negotiate right, prices right. for prescriptions. Mm -hmm. And who wrote that into the law? The drug companies lobby. In yeah. fact, it's been proven out that they wrote the law every single word. Uh, the original Medicare? Yes. The drug lobby yeah. actually, like, you got to understand a lot of senators and representatives are not expert in all, all facets of our lives. Right. So in a lot of cases, lobbyists come along and say, we can help you. Here's what you do. Craft the wording this way, and this is what will happen. And, of course, the lobbyists take good care of these people with donations. Mm -hmm. And so then he, in effect, wrote the part of the law that disallows Medicare from negotiating drug prices. Right. And mind you, the largest consumer 
of drugs in the world. Are people who are on Medicare? Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the um, that had to be recent because the Part D only yeah, it was came. Yeah, under George W. Bush. Yeah. 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 Um, because they brought about Part D, I think, under under George W. Bush. Yeah. Uh, I think. I, th- hmm? I think the only person fighting or the only organization fighting the lower drug cost in this country happens to be AARP. Yeah, yeah but they're not doing very well at it. I got to tell okay. you something. I, I uh, you know, when I've, I've suddenly looked at the fact that, yeah, we're, you know, Marjorie's company is paying the money for our, our uh, drug insurance, but uh, it's still, it's like a $495, co- uh, uh, $465, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, premium. Uh, premium. Okay. Well, the, you know, the deductible. Okay. Deductible. Okay. deductible. Okay. Oh, deductible. Yeah. 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 And then after that, the drug prices are not as low as they were before for me. But the thing is that I learned a little lesson. Like, for instance, I was taking Cialis or the generic for Cialis. Um, and... Um, it was costing me something like every three months, it was costing like 75 bucks or something like that. If you bought it at this, my pharmacy, and you didn't have insurance, it would be about $800 for a three-month supply. So I'm talking to my urologist recently, and I said, you know, I really can't afford to, they, they don't even allow me to have it under this new plan. They don't want to pay for it unless I go get an exception, and then I'm going to have to pay an arm and a leg. He says, you want a little hint? Just call me when you need it. I said, why? He says, uh, I will call over, and he started looking online. He says, ah, here's a good deal. Do you have a Costco near you? I said, yeah. He said, now, where are you getting your, your drugs from now? I said, well, he, I said, um, Walgreens Community. He said, at Walgreens Community, this drug will cost you around $250 for 90 days. I said, really? He says, yeah, and that's with your, I think, with your insurance or whatever. He said, they have a good, go to get a good RX card. He said, now you go over to Costco, and I will phone it in there, and you will have your prescription coming out of there. And you bring your good RX card with you. Do you know how much three months is going to cost you? And we looked at it $15. on this computer. Says fifteen dollars and ninety five cents. Oh. I'm calling my doctor in a couple of months and gonna go over to Costco. I mean, when I get my my uh, take care of my COVID and all of that, I'm gonna go over to Costco and I'm gonna start getting my because um, when we, once we start shopping there again, we go there about every two weeks, so I can pick it up. You know. Uh, but it, the thing that we don't do in this country is what makes Walgreens so wonderful that they can charge, you know, $800 for this drug <laughs> and the Costco, forget the good RX card, can charge 50 What? It's why is Walgreens. it? Walgreens. There's a place down here called Harlem Drug, which is just a local drug store. And they're at that Fifty dollar range and fifteen dollars if you got the good RX card, and their caddy corner to the place where I go up and pick the more expensive. How uh, how in that distance in that say one eighth of a mile between the stores did the price suddenly jump that high? It's shipping charges, and it's also yeah. the no, contract no, between no. the no. It's the contract between well, the company. That, that, and, right. that, you know, but you can argue Somebody's anything you want to. Somebody's still paying eight hundred dollars. No, you can Somewhere. argue. You can argue anything you want to. The fact is, the government should say no. You're right. going to charge the same price That's for right. this drug everywhere, and you have to sell it at the lowest price you're currently selling it somewhere in this country. And if you're selling it to Costco that cheap, then you have to sell it to Walgreens and to the consumer that cheap. Yes, if you Joe. went to Costco without the good RX card, it would still cost you an arm and a leg at Costco. No, no. With the good not, RX card that makes you get no, the discount. No, no. I looked. I looked. They have the price that Costco charges for it without insurance and without the good RX card, and it was $50. It's 1595 with the good RX card. Meanwhile, at my place, it says something like for one month or something, 250 bucks, and then it lowers it with the good RX card to somewhere around 210 or something like that. No, Costco is 50 bucks for it. 
top price. So th shouldn't there be an equality? I mean, and then I go to this, uh, if I go to this Harlem drugstore, it's as cheap as it is at Costco. And meanwhile, I'm going to Community Walgreen because Marjorie likes Community Walgreen. They're so nice down there. Yeah. They're making bank, that's why. They're not even playing with their, with my balls when they got their hands in my pocket. <laughs> Give your so, read around. Does everybody know what good RX is? It's an app, yeah. first of all. Oh, yeah. Charlie yeah. Sheen or, and Martin Sheen, right? Yeah. Yeah. The ads, wait a minute. Let me let me let me just go. Yeah, the up, app go. on your phone, yeah, or on your computer. It's just called Good RX, yeah. and you can compare prices. And you're right, Costco is the cheapest around here too. Yeah, but you go to Good RX. Wait a minute. Let me go to GoodRx.com. Compare wait. prices on GoodRx.com. Yeah, you. Can, that's what I was going to do here, and you can compare. You pay, you pay for the RX card. Yeah, for no. instance, Tadafil, which is the drug I'm currently talking about, which is the generic uh, Cialis. If I go down to my Walgreens uh, community, oh, retail, retail, ready for this? Seven hundred and eighty-two dollars. This sure. is for how many? How many? Uh, oh, I got ninety tablets, so that would be three months supply. Seven hundred and eighty-two dollars retail. If I use the good RX card, it'll go to 293. Quite a substantial savings, I will have to say, using the good RX card. However, if I go to my local Costco, the price is, are you ready for this? I was I was wrong initially. The full price retail, $48. Oh, and by the way, with the coupon, it's gone up to $25.55. Okay? But so what? It's still twenty five fifty five. It's not uh, what it was, you know. So uh, uh, I can uh, I can uh, I can go there. At the CVS with the coupon, it's two hundred and forty four dollars. At Stop and Shop, I can go down to the Stop and Shop. It's a little bit away, but I can go down to the Stop and Shop, and it's uh, one thousand one hundred seventy dollars retail. But if you've wow. got the good RX coupon. It's sixteen dollars and forty-one cents. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Does any of this, under anybody's wildest imagination, make any sense whatsoever? No. no. Nope. And let's take another drug that I take. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what it, what, what I would, what, what, are, what are one of the other ones that I take? Eh. One of the psychiatric drugs? No, I, <laughs> I don't have a psychiatric. Tamulosin. Okay, tamulosin is a, oh, here we go. I got them all listed here. Here we go. Tamulosin, all right? Tamulosin is what I take. It, it makes it easier for me to pee, all right? Uh, it loosens up your prostate. Sounds like a girl I dated, Tamulosin. I think I went out with her. <laughs> yeah, for 30. Tamulosin? Let's, yeah. go, let's, <laughs> go, let's go for 90 capsules, okay? All right, here we go with the 90 capsules. All right. If I go to Community Walgreens, 80 capsules, retail, $253. Now, it probably goes down with my insurance. I don't know how much it would go down with my insurance, but it does go down with my insurance. $87.39 with the, with the good RX card. However, if I go up to Costco, uh, it's, uh, let me see here. Oh, it's uh, $13 retail and $13.13. <laughs> <laughs> with the coupon, I'm going to pay more with the coupon. But the point I'm making here is, this makes no sense at all. Why is it, uh, you know, why is something hundreds of dollars in one place and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, $25 in another place? It just doesn't make any sense. Greed. Hmm? Greed. Well, that's what we have to fix, you know. That's what, what we the market will bear. Huh? Yep. It's what the market will bear. Well, I mean, okay. yeah, but the market doesn't bear it because I can go over to Costco and buy the same thing cheaper. In fact, I'm thinking of looking at my all my drugs and having all the ones that are higher priced uh, that, uh, to get them through uh, Costco and, and use my insurance over there and then maybe use the good RX card on top of that. You don't, you don't even need to go to Costco around here. You go to Costco, you send in your prescription to them. Mm -hmm. They fill it and they'll mail order to your, to your door. Oh, they will. The so Costco here in California will. I'm, I'm sure they'll do it here too. I, I, have, I have private health insurance, Kaiser. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so my prescriptions, you don't want to hear it. They're like a 90 day supply of any generic drug is like $6 and name brand is $20. So I take a, an asthma inhaler. Yeah. That's like $400 per month for each container. Yeah. And I get three of them delivered to me a 90 day supply or hundred day supply, whatever it is for $20. Okay. So to. I want to know if they can send it to you for $20. Why shouldn't the price just be twenty dollars? Right. Well, that's insurance, so you're paying well, the insurance company, though. I am. That's correct. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you're paying the insurance there. company on top of that. It's yeah. like an airplane. No two people on an airplane pay the same price mm -hmm. for a seat. No, you don't. I yeah. agree. Do you problem. remember the days with the airlines? This was a great thing with the airlines because when I first came out here to New York uh, back in the uh, '80s, um, or was it the '70s? It was the '70s. Like, when I came here in the 70s, 70s um, I, uh, I had to, uh, I think it was, was that I fly out here? Yeah, I think I flew out here. Or I, at one point, I left New York, all right, to go work in California. And in those days, if you bought a flight to California, you had to buy a round trip. Oh, you could buy one way, but a round trip would cost you like 150 bucks. And a one way would cost you eight hundred. It never made sense. Mm. But it was that way. Remember, Alan's nodding yes. It was that way for years. I think Robert's got the right point. He no two people on an airplane pay the same amount. You but know? Their model, professional model, is the following. The people that sit in first class or business class mm -hmm. are on expense accounts where the company doesn't really monitor how much you pay for a seat. So they might be paying twelve hundred for a flight that somebody that gets a discount ticket pays a hundred and a half for. Mm -hmm. But the company is making out because the twelve hundreds subsidize the cheaper tickets. So in the long run, if they get X amount from that airplane, they don't really give a shit who pays what so long as they make yeah. their nut. So it pretty much works the same way with drugs, with drug companies. I mean, it's just, too. it's it's insane. And, why, and, why do they call it first class? Because you get to the destination first? Yeah, no. Partly. No. <laughs> no. Hey, it's Alex, short. I got, I used to, I, uh, I take this drug. I have been for 35 years. I have to take the brand. I can't take, uh, I can't take the generic for various reasons. And, uh, in, and it's very rarely prescribed. And in, in uh, if I get the brand in the United States with a prescription, you're not gonna believe this. It's for four months. It's like eight grand. I get it. I get it in Canada for three hundred dollars. And when they give me the special note here to get that I have to have the brand, it goes down to like two thousand instead of eight thousand. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's just it's. It's incredible. So I'll I have a you, reputable uh, pharmacy in Canada that I use. I'll tell you my story. I, <clears throat> I used to, I have IBS, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, and I've, uh, I've since learned how to take care of it in other ways. But there was this one drug my doctor gave me that was uh, that you take it and it goes away. You take a 15-day a, a course of it, three of them a day, and it goes away your IBS of course later on it comes back so you take some more well my doctor prescribed it to me and I went down and it was 300 bucks and I said boy that's a lot of money and he says oh well I'll phone in and get you a you know a, an exception or whatever they call it that you have to you can get and I think he got it down to like 150 well I finally found that I didn't need it as much because I found that if you take a uh, uh, probiotics, it does help with the IBS considerably. And so uh, I started taking that, but then I decided I'm going to go get myself some more of this, okay, because all of a sudden my stomach was bothering me enough that I felt I needed it. And I went up to the local drugstore. Now, this is like a year and a half, two years later, to go get the drug, and the woman behind the counter goes, um, okay, um, the price is a little, it's a little pricey. I said, really? She says, yeah. I said, how much? She said, let me write it down. One month, uh, uh, what I would call a two-month supply because it was enough for two months that you could take it over two courses, you know, whenever you, it bothered you. I looked at it, and it said $2,100. Mm. 
And I said, how did it go from 300 to $2,100? And then we read about this guy, you know, had the AIDS uh, drug, and he raised the price on it, quadrupled, yeah. quintuple, and whatever. And yeah, he's an asshole. But so are these people. Because mm -hmm. I've got IBS, and it's not fun, and I need the help that their drug gives me. It was, it was just terrible seeing what these drug people do. Uh, first of all, Alan, and then Robert. Actually, Robert was first. Oh, was he first? How, how polite yeah. of you. This is such a polite group. Yes, Robert. Thank you, Alan. In either case, I my brother-in-law's brother-in-law is mm -hmm. a full professor at Rutgers teaching pharmaceuticals. And he's about as conservative, quiet guy. He's not a rabble rouser as you'd ever want to meet. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you sit with him for an hour and talk about drug manufacturers, your hair will stand up. For example, he'll say to you, cancer curing drugs will always hit the market 20 years after they're developed because there's no money in curing you. That in a sense, giving you drugs that keep you going makes them plenty of money. Part two, he talks about the fact that drug companies constantly say, well, one of the reasons we have to charge so much for the pharmaceuticals is research and development. There is so much money poured into research for drugs that never work out. And this man, Joe, tells us all the time, there are colleges across the country with pharmaceutical departments that find various and sundry little things that work. And so in effect, they do a lot of the research development on the cheap. And these companies come forward and buy them at, you know, ridiculously low, the patents at ridiculously low costs. Mm -hmm. He also tells us that research and development, he's not a socialist and neither am I. But he says if the government ever decided to get in the research and development game where it comes to pharmaceuticals, it would save everybody tons of money because it would take that factor out of the equation and drug manufacturers would become simply that, bill, you know, pill producers. Well, I'll tell you, uh, and, and I don't know if you know this, Vernon, because have you ever dealt with anything like Cialis? or whatever no uh i haven't yeah, but because he, i, I asked him i heard you talking earlier about yeah. your cranky prostate syndrome yeah well no <laughs> that was uh, ibs but the the uh, thing i other thing i was talking about was i take the cialis type drug it's called tadafil it's the generic because and not because it gives me a heart on but because it does the same thing that tamulosin does which is loosen up the prostate and it can be used to help alleviate uh uh, prostate problems, all right? Uh, and my doctors say he, he doesn't tolerate the other one well. That's what they do, and I usually have gotten it. But it's always been a fight to get it. And um, it's amazing the, the, just the, the, the price differentials in all these things are just uh, uh, sickening. You, you must know a lot about this, Kevin, because you've, you've been ill, <laughs> right? I mean, like pain meds as an example. Expen thing. Expensive? Yep. Well, for me, no. But well, my insurance company and, you know, dealing with it, yeah, same thing. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean it's not that, that expensive for you? What insurance do you have? Oh, well, I, I go through Blue Cross and my uh, <clears throat> stuff goes through Express Scripts, but it's 90 days. and. Yeah, well, I'm going through Express Scripts now, too. But first, I got to get yeah. over my $465 deductible you know yeah i mine's not too bad i mean i get the 90 days and those right. things are yeah. you know nine dollars the biggest one i've got is 50 bucks for a uh 90 day right. victoza thing but that's the that's the worst one i got i mean i got yeah. probably three of the ones you just named off i'm using so two so yeah jeff is, know, yeah jeff is they're in expensive the, but i know yeah. i can get them cheaper right jeff is in the uh has been in in the past has been in the medical instrument business making what uh, artificial hearts and things like that oh turn microphone. on turn on your microphone jeff 
Yeah. I would call them yeah. devices. Yeah. You know, devices, a, yes. A lot of them were instruments and things like that. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been implants too. Are they implants overpriced? Are really but, expensive. But are, are, do you feel they're overpriced? I mean, you know what it costs to make them. <clears throat> okay. You have a rough idea because you were in the business. Does the cost? Yeah, no, but that was at the at the manufactured level, mm -hmm. where the prices were, uh, we'll say, reasonable. You know, yeah. but let's let's call it competitive. Yeah. Quite often, but when you're talking about drugs, it's it's a very it's a different, different thing because we're what we're talking about we're talking world. about putting in a artificial heart or whatever or a device. It, we're, yeah. we're talking, that comes out of Medicare. That doesn't come out of uh, your drug plan. You well, know. I got these two. What? That are implants. I've got, I got a whole world of this. Boston stuff. Scientific. Oh, yeah, oh, and then this is my other. So, what, do you have to take those with you when you go on an airplane? No, these are implants. These are, I have one here and the other one over here. Well, what do you do, keep the label? He tear uh, it off. Uh, yeah. They scan them. <laughs> I got mud in yeah, my phone. Listen, what happens if I get uh, in a car accident mm -hmm. and one of them gets doesn't work anymore because it's an electrical system mm -hmm. and the socket is not working well because I had an accident. Yeah. Right? Right. So it would be nice to tell people... Hey, Mr. Surgeon, this is what I need. Oh, okay. You okay. have one of these? You have one of these hanging around? That's right. Yeah, uh, Get it at Napa. Yeah, Alan. Yeah. Robert, Robert, put it in your phone. Supposed to say I was next. Jeff. Yeah. Uh, so, so anyhow, going back to irritable bowel syndrome, I've had it since I was a kid. Yeah. The first thing you learn everywhere you go is where all the bathrooms are. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's... And so anybody that has it will know that. I've gone through all kinds of different drugs. The best drug I saw gastroenterologist seven years ago, eight years ago, and probiotics are the way to go. Get rid of all the drugs. The probiotics work. Probiotics great. do work. I can say that for sure. You know, and then I then I forget to take them for a couple of weeks, and all of a sudden I start having a flare. That's a problem. You know, um, uh, you you just showed us a pill bottle there, John Larkin. Yeah, I, I was wondering how, how do I find out um, what the retail price on these are because. I only, you know, I got these for shingles called gabapentin. Oh, I, gabapentin is uh, it's oh, one of the drugs. Yeah, that's that's well, not just for shingles. Mm -hmm. No, right. I, 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 I was given it for um, gabapentin. I was given for my, uh, what, 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 which, which oh, one? Neuropathy. Yeah, yeah. Neuropathy. Yeah. Neuropathy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which has been acting up again. So I may have to take, I take, uh, I take another pill that isn't that. Okay, wait a minute. Let me go to Good RX again. I like it. It says, "Do not exceed thirty-six capsules daily." Yeah, okay, <laughs> thirty-six. Thirty-five <laughs> would be all right. I can do one a day. No, first it says, "Take one capsule by mouth by mouth daily at bedtime for three to five days. If tolerated, increase to one capsule two times a day for three to five days. Then one capsule every, three times a day for three to five days." Increase dose by one capsule every three to five days, but don't do not exceed thirty six capsules in a day. <laughs> All right, well, they, they started right. me at three. three they started well, me at I three, take, three I, times a day. I take uh, pregabalin, which is a form of gabapentin. It's the it's Lyrica in a uh, in a generic, a generic form. Yeah, uh, get this, okay? At my Walgreens community. It retails for three hundred and thirty-one dollars. Really? If yeah. I've got the coupon, I can get it at Walgreens for one hundred and twenty-four dollars and ten cents. Go up to wow. Costco. It retails for forty-eight dollars. I can get a three-month supply. Uh, three-month supply for eighteen hundred eighteen dollars and twenty cents. Well, that's, okay. That's, I think mine was ninety again, days for ten bucks. Again, again, folks who are watching me out there, go to GoodRx, get that card. And uh, don't go to your current place to get your drugs. If you have a Costco uh, membership, go to Costco. I mean, and tell them Alex yes, sent you. Yes, Brian. Uh, Brian. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. two things on what Robert was talking about. 
Chris Rock has a whole routine about not not curing any of these diseases and doing the same thing. They they want to keep you going, keep you going, and here's the <laughs> medication. Um, number two, the the R and D stuff is really true. We we were supposed to be profitable like 2008 when I first started. Mm-hmm. I started like 2004, and that just kept getting pushed because all the money and I mean millions of dollars after that <clears throat> they were taking it for R and D. Sure. We're doing a lot of research with breast cancer and even lung cancer, sure. uh, trying to find you know, in the, uh, the patterns in the genome and stuff like that. So sure. and we have right now, we have one whole building that's all R&D. So we sure. do, yeah, there is so much money. And Alex, like you said, there's much money going into products that will never hit the market. But, but here's um, what's crazy is you might be researching it and so might the company right across the way from you. Oh, oh yeah. Another yeah. company in, you know, in Kentucky. And so in yeah. effect, you're all kind of doing the same thing and money's going down the toilet. If that were somehow not competitive and it were more shared and the information yeah. was shared, it'd probably save us all a fortune. Yeah, and the university has had so many labs that they're that they have yes. a lot of research going through there too, like you said. We we should be happy that there are companies that are competing <clears throat> because we've got two vaccines on the market because of this competition stuff. Well, and I don't know if that was competition. And every country's got them. I, not I just us. Yeah, I don't know. I just the, talked to. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Well, no, go ahead, Brian. I, I just. I had my China meeting tonight with the <clears throat> the director over there, the, over a new facility there, and they have their own vaccine. <clears throat> it's a little bit less uh, effective, um, but you know they're they're in that area where when they had that spike, they went and tested. When they were doing the test, they tested like two million people within like a week, and they have a complete lockdown again now. And they're doing the vaccines, and vaccines are all free, and they're just lining up, and they're going to get the vaccines through their people pretty quick. Well, I found out Very today, weekend, right? today uh, I, uh, I was happy to hear that Shecky, because they lowered the age to 65, he just turned 65, so he got an appointment at a place near him, another one of the New York City health hubs, as they call it, <clears> and uh, uh, we both went on to a PDF that comes with it to look at it, and we're both getting the Moderna. And what it basically was was a disclaimer that, well, we're not saying it works <laughs> because it's Find on emergency this. because yeah. it's it's for emergency use. All right, we're not saying it works, but it there's a good chance it will. And you that, did not sue Moderna. That's a cover Biden. your ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, uh, Moderna, that. we then wait a month. They supposedly give you a card when you go there, and then you use that to redeem it and come yeah, in. California just lowered it to sixty-five. The only trouble is, we're not. Nobody's geared up to give all those people vaccines. We they are. vaccinated eight hundred thousand people in California since it started. Yeah. But they but they've got delivery of twenty-seven thousand. Or no, eight, eight, well, well, here's eight. what we're worried about. They, they, they are opening up, believe it or not, they're opening up Javits Center yeah. here in New York, which is huge. Okay, Disneyland. Uh, Disneyland they're doing in California. Like, but Disneyland here they're doing Javits Center. They're doing, they're doing the Mets Stadium. Yeah. Okay, and today the Yankees announced that they will open their stadium to shots. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's all wonderful. The only thing is we're only getting about 300,000 doses a week. Right. So, you know, uh, how long are we going it, to, it, it's got to be pumped up. Now, what Biden is suggesting that we do, see if you think this is a good idea, Brian. He suggested that we just, we have all these, we have an e- equal uh-huh. amount of a supply on hold for the second dose. And Biden says, just push those out there too. Because not everybody is going to go get a shot, Okay. And there's going to be some left over. And then when those people come around for their second shot, you use that. And hopefully by that time, we'll have more being produced by the companies and have more in the pipeline. So, Somebody's just got to run the data. They got to run the data and make sure they, they don't dry up with their supply. That's the main well, thing. Supposedly, <laughs> that second shot doesn't have to be exactly a month. It, it, yeah, that's, still- that's the minimum. There is no maximum from what is I read. Is it the same yeah, chemistry? Huh? The, the two shots, is it the same stuff? Yeah, exactly the same. Oh, yeah. it is? Exactly okay. the same. Okay. In fact, where did I read today? I think it was in this PDF that both shots are exactly the same stuff. I see. Yeah, but what? what you guys have to understand, that the first drug 
only gives you like 50 to 70 percent right. success mm -hmm. at the beginning. That's, it's better than nothing. When you, when you take the second one, now it brings you up to like 90, 95 percent. Yeah. What, what did you say? However, that, yeah. not when you just get get it. You got to wait another two weeks before yeah. it's actually been it's processed through your body. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but uh, uh, first of all, let me just say, Alan, let me just ask Brian something. Didn't you say the other day the effectiveness of the first shot is about 70%? I didn't say that. Somebody else did. I think Charlie my doctor, My mom's doctor told <laughs> okay. me that yesterday. Yeah, I, okay. I think that's the one I've heard. Yeah. Uh, yes, Alan. So th this, is, this is science and medicine working with They've determined through the double blind study, the phase three study, that in order to get protection, it gives you the, the vaccine if you get one between 50 and 70%, mm -hmm. but it doesn't last very long. They call that shot, the first shot, the primer. The second shot is the booster. And the booster is what gives you longevity. They don't know how long yet, but it gives you longevity. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know, for protection, six months, a year, two years, they don't know yet, but you've got to get the second one. And so the way they're talking about doing it, giving everybody the first one and worrying about the second one later has not been worked out in science. The FDA has said, don't do that. That's a, a bad move. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we have science that says you've got to get the second one in order to have protection for longevity the first one they've never they haven't studied how long how long the one shot will do yeah that's right yeah, alone. Alone. right yeah right. Uh, so, yes ray I, I i read i think in the times yesterday they they're pretty sure it's a year i don't know what they base that on but they, they're they uh i just read it yesterday yeah but. i heard there's no way to know all we oh, need first one. all we yeah, need is some a year other studies that are going on right now for children to say what, what's going to happen to some children if they took the drug? Right. Because ultimately, they're going to want to take it too. So, so, so they didn't. They didn't put the children. Anybody under sixteen, what in this country is not allowed to be in, a, in, a, in a study group. Yeah. How are you going to get a study group? Right, they're, right. They're you need a study group. Starting a, a study group right now. Mm -hmm. Actually, actually, actually Brian. Brian offered one of his kids. <laughs> He's right there. Yes. <laughs> well, Just I think, boy. you know, I mean, um, I'll get the first one and I'll worry about the second one. You know, I hope that when I yeah. go to get the second one, they say, come on down. we got plenty of, of, uh, of stuff here. Yeah. And um, uh, the governor, I think, is a little worried that maybe they can't guarantee more than about the next three weeks. Uh, but it's just the government hasn't been getting this stuff to them, and hopefully with Biden in power, everything will be, you know. I, I, would, I wouldn't take a chance and take your mask off and go. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you keep your mask shot. on. Even even after the two weeks has passed, even after you get the second shot, you stay pretty careful out there. Not for you, but just to help the oh, situation. Yes, for me. But you, can, yeah. but you know there are going to be a lot of people when they get that first shot are going to go crazy and take the mask off and run down oh, yeah. the street coughing. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, I, we can only hope that people will will take it as a as a they, decent. They, thing. they want to wait for herd immunity before you can take your mask off. I think Brian said that. Yeah, you well, look what those Republican congressmen did last Wednesday. Oh, yeah, that well, was yeah. just those. Did you hear Nancy Pelosi begging them to put their masks on too? And then yeah. they got sick, and, and they weren't putting. It. Was getting so no. pissed off. Well, you, today they all had masks on because they were going to be fined a hundred dollars if they didn't yeah. have one on, and yeah. if they got caught and then they did it again, they would be fined a thousand. Yeah. Um, yes. And it was going to be taken out of their out of their congressional paychecks. Yeah, where it was going to uh, come from. So they big... they but he, but here's what some of them were doing. They would start talking. And apparently no one <clears throat> told them because they're not used to using the mask that you pinch the nose, right? Yeah, they kept doing this. Yeah, yeah. you got to pinch the nose, and they kept going down below their nose, and they're pulling it back up mm, again. It's I going below it. their nose. They're pulling it back. It, it, the Republicans are so unknowledgeable about wearing a mask, they don't even know the basics of doing it, that when you get the mask, you simply 
Uh, where do I have one here? Uh, it's, in, uh, it's over there. Uh, but the top, there's a little piece of metal. Okay, just show them. Show them, Brian, just Everybody's so they know what we're talking there. about. There's a little piece of metal up there. And then you put it, uh, put the mask on there, Brian, for is a second. It, the, tie, the tie in is like that big one, I think. Yeah, but put it on, put it on, put it on a second. What and then think? what you do is you go up to the top and you Gorgeous. pinch it. And then it doesn't go falling off when you're talking. And now you can go rob a bank. Okay. Like Show us where the exits are, Brian. You know, they, they, had, they, had a con they had a congresswoman today giving her speech as fast as she could because she only had 30, 60 seconds. Yeah. And she looked really hot, but she had a mask on. Yeah. So, so I have no idea what she looks like without her mask. Right. So, What's her name? I don't even know her name. Uh, you know. Disneyland. But, a super site. That's what they're calling them here. Super sites. So Disneyland's doing them. So maybe after you get the shot, you get to go ride or something. Well, no, yeah. you can have a super shot. That's fine. But if people get there and they they ran out, yeah, then we got a but problem. They're, they're so slow right now. I don't think they're gonna run out. Well, you know, I mean, I Not think wants warp one. speed. We want to get speed. it up. We want to get it up in New York uh, State. We want to get it up to what is it? A million this month by by the end of this month. <laughs> They Sounds don't. nice. Well, yeah. They were talking about Olympians. I'm doing my. They were line. talking about bringing the Olympians ahead in line to get the shot so they can compete in the Olympics. Yeah. Even they said they don't want to do that. They yeah. said no, no, no. That's bad PR. Yeah. 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 Um, Speaking of bad yeah. PR, uh, that QAnon freak is uh, gonna file uh, uh, impeachment articles against Biden tomorrow. Yeah. It just came out. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Oh really? What for? He hadn't done anything. So think of something. Can you impeach someone who's not even in office? I don't, I think, I don't got, know. I think he got away. Something What's about the China and uh, and the Ukraine or something. Yeah, something. Yeah, with, uh, some shit. Yeah. Just, you know, I I, I, uh, I don't I don't think Biden's sweating it. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She's only Let's been in Congress for like a, like five days, and she's already yeah. filing impeachment. Fucking, she would a mess. No, I take like President Harris. Yeah, 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 me too. Yeah, I'm with you, Charlie. I would. Yeah, too. me too. I think that'd be great. Hell yeah. Well, yeah. What what have they got against her? Oh, I forgot. She's a woman. Uh, yeah. You know, and her skin her skin is a few pigments darker. Yeah, it's a few <laughs> pigments darker. She's a. She's a half. She's a half breed, you know. Oh boy, it's amazing. What That's a, a share song. Half breed. Oh boy, yeah. you know. I just, uh, I, I'm getting older. I just want to live long enough to see how this whole thing plays itself out, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you go on without me, don't forget to storm the Capitol. Anyway. Yeah, uh, Antifa rules. You know, I, I could see reasons to. I don't attack. even care about that. Yeah, you know, I could see reasons to attack the Capitol, but n nothing in this pres and not, not for those guys. You know, I could have seen it years ago for the black people in this country who were being taken advantage of. You know, uh, th they had a real, they had a real argument. Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time. You've been very quiet tonight, Charlene, but good having you here. It's nice seeing okay. you. And, uh, of course, Jeff, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Always appreciate it. Charlie, good to have you no here as, as well. I'm playing it. Oh. Can you hear it? Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, John Larkin. Thank you, Ray. Vernon, good to see you tonight, and good to see Kevin here. Why doesn't everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and uh, maybe they'll go over and give Jack Bishop a bad time on his show. Uh, uh, he's next over with the same Gabnet Coleman on Skype. He doesn't use Zoom, he uses Skype. He'll give you the Skype address and all of that. I'll see you again tomorrow night. 10.30, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there and wear a mask, okay? Because the vaccine is coming up real soon and you're in line.